Today I'm going to show how I refactored a server action using the Next Safe Action library and the benefits that I see from it. So let's get right to it. Let's start by looking at the before code, the code that I have not refactored. And this code is from last week's video. I'll link to it as the starter code in the video description. So let's just scroll down a little bit. You can see the dependencies that are added here. The one that I'm going to remove in the refactor is use state because that's kind of where this pattern gets messy. Right now in this user form, I'm using state for a message and I'm also using state for errors. I receive both of these back from the server actions. So let's see how that works in the on submit function, which is really the part that's going to change here. So we're clearing out that state when the on submit function starts. After that, we call the server action and await the result. And then after we get the result, I have to handle all of this state. So if there are errors, I set a message for the error. And I also set the errors that we can later iterate through as we render the J or the TSX, JSX, whichever I'm using TypeScript. So it's TSX. And then here, of course, we're setting a success message. If there wasn't an error, we call router refresh, which I'm going to do even in the refactored version because that resets the client side cache and then also a form reset putting in the new form values and it also resets the dirty fields i went all over all of that in last week's tutorial which i could also link to in the description so after that you scroll down here to where we're rendering everything and i have to render a success or fail message here at the top and then I also have to iterate through the errors and render those. So quite a bit to do with those two sets of state we saw here, message and errors. Now let's look at the refactored client form and see how next safe action simplifies all of this. And here's the refactored user form now in the repository that I'll link to in the description as the completed code. You can see I'm no longer bringing in use state alongside use effect here, but I am now bringing in the use action hook from next safe action slash hooks. And then I've also created a separate custom component that says display server action response. So I was able to abstract some of those messages that we were seeing rendered right in the component in the last version you'll see that are now in this new component and I'll show that as well. So let's scroll down here and look how we use the hook first. So no more of the use state here at the top, I've eliminated that, but now I'm getting the execute function the result and an is executing status that is a Boolean from use action. And we're passing our server action into the use action hook. Now this is interesting right here because now the result is handled differently. I'm not having to handle all of that state before. The messages and the errors are all inside of this result. And we'll see how that works. The execute actually calls the server action where we need it to be called and we use is executing much like I would use a disabled status when I wanted to disable buttons or wait on something to happen. So I'm maybe showing a working uh, pulse loader or a circle or something like that. So those are the three things we bring in from the hook. Now, as we scroll down and we look at this on submit function, it gets so much simpler. I've got a test here for validation errors that I submit with the execute function instead of what I'm actually going to submit. But after testing that, you just want to submit the form.get values here from React Hook form, and that calls the server action. We're not dealing with any of that state inside of the on submit function now. It just got so much simpler. And now we still have router refresh and we still have the form reset. But that's it. Then if we look down a little further, I just put in this custom component here, display server action response, and I pass the result to that. So let's look at that. But let's also look at the button where I would use that is executing. This is where we are executing the server function. So here I just have text that says working or submit that we would see when it's not working. But essentially, if you had a pulse loader or any other animation, something else, you would put that right here because this is the Boolean that we're getting from that use action hook. So let's look at this display server action response just so we can see the responses we're getting and displaying now in that component that we were previously, of course, showing at the top in our before version of the code. So now we're passing this result in and I have typed out the types up here for that. So we're going to have the result and it could possibly have data. It could also possibly have a server error, a fetch error, 
or the validation errors. And that's what we were focusing on before from Zod because it's still using Zod to validate what we're sending to that server action. So when we come down here, we just pass in the result and then I destructure all of those right here. And then I'm showing a message if we have one, if not a server error, if we have one, a fetch error and the validation errors. And I just made all of that into a reusable component. Let me press Alt Z really quick so you can see that. This is still the same type of loop through the validation errors that I was using before, but now of course they're called validation errors. And you can compare that original code and then of course the completed code here, which is the refactor if you want to from the links I've put in the video description. All right guys, we're a few minutes in now, so let's roll that beautiful bean footage and make this official. Okay, we're back and we're going to look at the original server action, the one that has not been refactored. And by the way, if you're noticing something different about my voice this week, I've been sick all week. So no face circle in this week's video either. I'll bring it all back, but trust me, you don't want to see this hot mess right now. Okay, looking at the original server action here, it's called save user. I've defined a return type. I brought in my Zod schema. I've also brought in the user type. And once again, if I wanted to test errors, I have some data commented out here, but I'm basically passing in this user type that we wanna save. I'm parsing that with Zod. If it doesn't parse, so if there's not a success, this is where we were sending back the errors. Notice we're using the flatten method here from Zod. So it's uh, that object that we were iterating through to display the errors. And we had a message for failure. Other than that, we go ahead and call the patch method here with fetch send that data and then a success message that the user is updated all nice but it's not completely thorough uh, something else could happen here like a server error or something else that I'm not really catching and overall I I just want to see how it can change if we look at this refactored version because I think next next safe action has really thought through some of this approach and so here's the refactored version. Now, once again, we're bringing in the user schema from Zod that we have defined before this uh, user, use server action or server action. But then we need to bring in the action client from the safe action here. We also need to bring in flatten validation errors. So we're flattening those out much like that Zod error flatten method. So we can still pretty much handle those the same way and loop through those. So now notice I'm using export const save user action instead of export default the function keyword. And I'm setting it all equal to the action client. And then we start chaining things. So we chain the schema validation here by calling the schema method. We pass in the user schema. We no longer need to import that user type. It figures all of that out. We've got the handle validation error shape method here inside of this. This is one of the options that we're using here with schema. And what happens here is we use that flatten validation errors and then dot field errors. Essentially, we get that validation back the way we were getting it in my original version. We flatten those out. After that, we call the action here. And by the way, notice there's no return here. It's just if there's a validation error kind of behind the scenes, next safe action is going to send that response. But if we get past validation, then we get to the action. This is where we have to put in async for the function. And now whatever is passed to it comes into, comes into the function as parsed input here. And you can see I'm destructuring that user. So we have all of the fields right there. After that, it's basically the same. So it got fairly simplified. And then of course, I was testing this out with throw new error and I just put in Dave error here, but it will catch this error as a server error. So remember back in the client component that it had those different types of errors it could catch. So I was testing the server error. I was also testing the validation error by the different type of data that I was sending from the client. So you can test those out. So those are the main differences. I should also show the setup here because we're importing this action client in from lib safe action. So let me go over to the file tree and then go down to the lib directory, wherever that is. There we go. You can see how I set this up. So you can define a custom server error where you can just say, oh no, something went wrong, but you don't have to put this in here. We could just eliminate all of this 
and you could leave the file like this, but this file is required. So inside of your lib directory, inside of your source directory, source lib, then you want safe-action.ts. This is how it all gets started. Good documentation on the website for this as well. So are there any drawbacks? Well, one thing I wanna talk about, and it could just be how you handle your logic. This is back in the unrefactored, the original version here. Notice how this logic is in the on submit function. So we're awaiting a result. Now you might be sending a result back that you want to do something with, like call a toast message from Shad CN or something like that. There you would get that result, pass it right into the toast and call it here. Essentially kind of a waterfall a synchronous logic because you're awaiting the result before you do anything else. Well, that's not going to happen with next safe action because you get that result from the hook. So it's more like working with uh, use SWR or react query or something like that. So you're not going to be able to get that data and within the waterfall of the function essentially respond with that exact message. So what you would probably do in a new version, if you were wanting to do that, the message that came back and say you wanted to call a toast, you would probably need to use something like a use effect up here that would be looking at the result.data to see if that changed or something like that. So that could be a drawback depending on how you set up your logic. But I really like just how everything cleaned up so nicely in this new version. So when I look at this and I come down, oops, I can scroll back up actually to look at the on submit. If I got rid of all of these comments here that I just put in to be helpful, it's a really simple on submit function now. It just has execute and then my router refresh and form reset. And everything else is handled here coming in from the hook. So I can just pass that result to my display server action response. Okay guys, you will find next safe action at next-safe-action.dev. That's where you wanna find this website. Very good docs, easy to get started here with the get started instructions. From installing, you need Zod along with it, of course, and really just easy to follow overall. So I've also written a blog post on Next Safe Action that I'll link to in the video description. And this topic, like many I cover, was a viewer requested topic, and it was suggested in last week's video comments. So be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see in my upcoming videos. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. A quick thank you to my supporting patrons, Holy Coder is a progress provider, and junior patrons, Programming Polyglot, Tim, Philippe, Morgan, Isaac, Will, Ernie, Scott, Stacy, Philip, Abe, Javier, Michael, you're all helping me reach my goals and I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it has exclusive content and early release content. And it's not one of those Patreons that doesn't get many posts. I'm active on there every week. I'll put a link to it in the video description, so please check it out if you haven't. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.